Okay, so back to um, understanding Hermeticism. Um, Hermes Trismegistus is the one who founded um, Hermeticism, or Hermes, or Thoth. Um, the Egyptian god Thoth and the Greek Hermes um, are said to be one and the same. Um, so, well, some of the key things about Hermeticism. Um, it is the oldest known spiritualism. Um, it dates back to the ancient civilizations of Atlantis, Lemuria, and Mu. Um, it's a very sophisticated religion. It encompasses all of them, and probably all the religions of today actually came from it. Um, consciousness is non-local. So, the body keeps consciousness kind of like in this state to where we're separated from we don't know about the other consciousness around us because we can't physically see it or in other words sense it with like per se our five senses so um, the um, but if we were to leave our body like when we die we would just go into all the other consciousnesses which combine into one and that is called the all what most people say or what most people would call God which is a word that I stay away from um, so um, the uh, so so we're, we're all one spirit and this gives us the ability to like um, if I wake up or I have a thought or not like wake up as in oh I'm sleeping and I wake up but wake up as in conscious consciously wake up so I can cause that to happen to somebody a thousand miles away um, if I have the same idea I can cause that to happen to somebody a thousand miles away. It could be people around me too. You know, I can get it in their head and stuff like that with just my thoughts. I could sit in this room and meditate positive vibes forever or as for as long as I live. But, um, and it would change the world. Everything is about frequency and vibration. Uh, well, not everything, but the majority of the things that we denote as science. Um, so, the positive thoughts reverberate into the world. And not only will it change your life, but it helps change the life of somebody else. And I know when a lot of people think about hermetics, they think of secret societies and... Uh, um, you know, all those bad secret societies. I, I don't really have to say them. You all know who they are. Um, and yes, that is true. A lot of Hermetics is in those secret societies. But I do not believe that way. I found this on my own. I'm not a part of, like, any special practice with any organization or anything like that. Um, so, yes, hermetics can be used for dark, evil purposes, but it can also be used for really, really good, positive purposes. And it's those positive pur purposes that you should learn and understand hermetics so you can transcend this place. And, and I'm going to help, through me talking, I'm going to show how you actually do transcend and um, but let's get to know everything else first um, so back to where I am okay so consciousness is non-local it's all around we're all one okay which is going to bring us into the areas about us getting to know how Hermetics is divided, or Hermeticism is divided. Okay, so, 
It's composed of alchemy, astrology, and magic. Let's start with alchemy. Alchemy? No, no, no. Let's start with... Is it alchemy that I'm starting with? Okay. Yeah, it is alchemy. Okay. Alchemy is an operation of the sun and... Uh, Wrong one, give me one second. It's an operation of the sun, and when you think of alchemy, don't, it's not necessarily the thing where you're trying to turn a metal into gold. Um, it is a lot related to mercury, and I'll tell you why in a second, but um, um, the whole idea is to turn the mercury into gold. And, but, let's just think of alchemy for a second. Carl Jung is the best person to read on this topic. Like, if you want to get to know this topic, you want to study Carl Jung. And I might do some videos on this, too. Just not the astrology. And I also might do videos on the positive thinking part. Um, because of how this is divided. But right now, I'm kind of doing an overall summary. Um, the ego the anima, the animas, the shadow, the persona, the collective and individual unconsciousnesses. This is what I'm talking about on alchemy. Knowing your dreams, even writing them down, your subconscious thoughts, or what your mind is trying to tell you when you're asleep, because you go into a different reality. Know the progressions of those dreams, but just not only because the progression of the dreams is going to relate to the outer you. Uh, also, take an example of your life. Know what figures you might consider your on a mess if you're a man or if you're a female. No, no. If you're a male, know what figures you might consider your on a And, you know, you, you also have on a mess figures, so if you can find those too. And same thing for the for the female, except you want to get to know your animus, and um, you'll have animus too. Um, but the, the key is always the opposite, and it's a uniting of the opposites. And the whole process should lead you to some kind of great kind of suffering on the inside, some kind of truth that once you accept it's really going to disturb you, um, but that's just because you're not used to knowing this way. You're believing the illusion right now that's diluted in your mind. Um, and then, you know, eventually you'll rid yourself of your ego. The ego, of course, is like the greatest deceiver. Um, it, its name is you. It pretends to be you. It wants you to do everything, but the more that you're attached to things, the more the ego is con in control, and the more you let go, the more you rid yourself of the ego. The ego wants control in any situation that you fear, even death itself. You know, that is the ego telling you, man, you cannot die, you cannot die, you cannot die. What happens when you die? You become a part of God. Or, like I said, I don't like that word, but the all. And I'm going to start using the all from now on. Um, and if anybody has any questions about it, I'll just tell it to them down below or whatnot. But, um, so, Carl, Carl Jung is one of the main key things that I would read in order to understand alchemy and the way how it's used to help further yourself. Because if you if you work on yourself, you're helping everybody else. I mean, that's just kind of like how it falls. Uh, okay. So, the next one is going to be magic. And magic can be good and it can be evil and it is an operation of the moon where al alchemy is an operation of the sun so that means alchemy is more known or is more of the light whereas magic is more of a, the subconscious the 
the hidden kind of realm. Um, uh, one thing that I also forgot to tell you, but in alchemy, it's the the mercury that you're trying to turn into gold, but the mercury is knowledge and wisdom, and because that's what mercury symbolizes uh, mostly. So you want to gain a lot of knowledge and understanding because the more knowledge that you gain, the more truth will be revealed to you. Um, and it's easier to go out through the process, you know, study a little bit of Hebrew, or understand why math and Hebrew are related, or, um, you know, just study a lot of the ancient wisdom. Um, know thyself. Um, so back to magic. Magic is good and evil and as an operation of the moon. Um, the good will use magic um, from the mind, like positive thinking, positive thoughts, thinking of the outcomes to come. And they'll use like the natural elements of the earth to heal. Like, you know, a good example of this is um, um, cayenne pepper. Um, I use cayenne pepper a lot. It, it boosts the immune system. Um, so I put it in my eggs every morning and I always have eggs or some form of protein in the morning because you want to have protein in the morning because it gives you the energy to prepare your day. Um, so I'll put a little cayenne pepper in my eggs and I'll use that to eat. It, if you ever have a sore throat, put some cayenne pepper in some water. Um, put it in your mouth, gargle with it, and swallow the last part of it. It'll cure your sore throat, guaranteed. It's doctors and everything have even studied the effects of it and say it's so. So much so that the main spice ingredient in it, I don't know how to pronounce it right, like caspias, I forget what it's called, but um, they actually made a skin cream for it for certain situations for people. Um, so cayenne pepper, mm-hmm. Um, and then, um, so, using the natural elements of the earth to heal and whatnot, dark magic will use anything to obtain power. You want to stay away from dark magic because it's just evil. And even though you might gain power, you're going to lose things. And that's the whole thing. The more power you obtain, the more you lose. The more you let go, the more you gain. And then astrology, and astrology is an operation of the stars, and it's to know oneself in order to purify oneself, and to know the times when to do so. And what I mean by that, and that's why I gave the example of the Pluto ascendant opposition transcendent, or not transcendent, transit um, earlier when I was talking about my spiritual awakening, is because if you can know that powerful influence are coming into your natal chart area, your astrological forecasts, then you can use um, that knowledge to further yourself. To you, you may know that it's going to be a ton of pain, but that pain will lead to something good. Um, you, you may there may be good times coming ahead. But you have to know the energies um, and what you can do with those energies um, to its furthest potential. Um, and that is the, the true purpose of astrology is to, these are the tools that we have to help transcend the earth, to, to get away from this place and onto a better place. And if you like this place, then you're more than welcome to stay. But I want to go back to the source, to the all, and uh, be in harmony. Uh, but um, I'm going to stop it there. I might break all these down a little bit more and go a little bit more deeper into that sometime. But until then, let positivity be your guide. Bye.